Hello everyone, my name is Reggie Collins and I'm the Marketing Manager here at Mozenda and we're excited to be here with you on this webinar. Let's give everyone a few minutes to join. Uh, while we do that, I'd love to see where you're all where you are all from. Go ahead and chat in your name and, and where you're joining us from. We'll look for those. As those come in, we'll wait a little bit for everyone else to join. All right, we got some people from Oregon, from Toronto, Denver, Connecticut. This is awesome. Texas. Well, while you guys are still joining, and keep messaging me where you're from and what your name is, um, let me quickly remind you about our year-end promotion we still have going on. So as you've seen, we have our client appreciation uh, promotion, which is a 20% bonus on all manually purchased processing credits. So if you go to purchase additional processing credits, we're going to give you 20% more from what you've purchased. And uh, to do that, you just enter code client appreciation, no spaces, um, when you're going to check out. Um, if you're an enterprise client, you can actually contact your account manager and we'll get that taken care of for you. So let me go ahead and introduce our presenters today. So you have myself as well as Kenneth Bedwell, who is our support manager. And he, you, a lot of you are probably familiar with him and have talked to him before. And he is an expert at the Mozenda tool. And so what we'll do is, I'll, let me go ahead and tell you about um, our agenda today. So we're going to cover our enhancement, which is our copy and move agent data feature. And then Kenneth is also going to show you our new feature, which is the data compare. At the end of all of it, we will then have a question and answers at the end. So if you have questions, please feel free to send those in. We have someone answering those during the webinar as well. And we can also cover those at the end. So without further ado, let me turn the time over to Kenneth to take it away from here. Thanks, Reggie. So uh, many of you have been using the copy and uh, move agents, um, whether to different accounts or within your own account. Um, and we've seen this has been pr pretty popular. And we've actually gotten several requests to be, uh, have the uh, functionality to copy the data and the job history as well. And so for this first portion, I just want to copy, or, or I'll go over the copy and move agent data. So this basically gives you the option to copy or, or move your agent data from either one account to another or within the same account. Um, in this particular example that I'm going to show you of this agent called Congress Bills, we're going to copy this data. So to do both functions copy or move the agent data, uh, if I go up to the top left double gears here, I can see the options to do this. I have move and copy here. So I'm going to select the move button. You'll notice here that it automatically takes the new agent name. So it's the same name as the agent name you see at the top left here. Now I have the ability to move it to a different account. Now I, the, my current setup is an enterprise account. So I have, multiple, I have two accounts in my Mozenda enterprise account. So moving it, I only have an option to move it to the other account. For those of you who do not have that option, you will not be able to use uh, access this drop down box to move it. So now we've added this feature, this checkbox here. I can move the data and the job history along with the agent as well to the different account. And so what this will do is it will take it out of one account and put it into another. And it will delete all of the data and the job history and the agent from that one account and move it on to the other account. So go ahead and cancel this there. Now let's talk, talk about the copy agent data feature. So once again, I'm going to go up to the double gears and select it and go down to copy. So it's kind of the similar format. However, now I can copy it within the same account, which is my, it's called Mozenda, or I can move it to the other account, which I called account. Um, and so I can select the one I want it to go to or within the same one. Um, and you'll now have the same option, just like the move, uh, move agent, to copy the data and the job history by selecting that. There are certain requirements you need to have. So first off, you have to be an account administrator of your account in order to be able to move or copy agents. Um, and you have to have a paid account. So individual, professional, monthly, or our uh, enterprise level uh, licenses have the ability to uh, copy and move agents, but then they also need to be account administrators. If you would like access to this feature and you're not an account administrator, feel free to reach out. 
um, rather for the enterprise licenses, obviously, feel free to reach out to your account uh, manager who can make the appropriate people the account administrator without any issues. Okay, so that just about uh, uh, sums up the copy uh, slash move agent data. If you do have further questions on that, you can feel free to chat them in. We do have somebody, just a reminder, we do have someone who is answering those questions live, or you can contact our great support team. All right, let's move on to the uh, next one, the data compared. So the data compared um, allows you to view changes made to items. Uh, this we, we've gotten this request from a lot of different clients recently uh, because we a lot of people, for example, if we look here in this data set of stock prices, um, we have the ability to see, so this symbol means this row has changed. We've had the ability to know that something on the row has changed, but we don't know what changed. And so now you have the opportunity to see that, and I'm going to show you how to do that. So before I talk about, before I actually show you that in the changes, let's talk about the data compared and the requirements to set this up properly. So the first thing you need to do to use the data compared properly is you need to have store item history. For some of those existing clients uh, we've had for several years now, this used to be called, previously called track history. And in August of this year, we changed it to store item history and made a few changes to that. Um, and so to find, to check the store item history feature, you need to go up to the double gears and select this box, then go to harvesting settings, and finally select the behavior tab. Here you'll see the option to store item history. You'll notice that this has to be checked in order for, to see the differences. Okay, so once this is checked, you'll now be able to see items that have been added, changed, unchanged or removed. And you'll see these icons up at the top and you can select them to see the different ones. And then you'll see the item, the icons again on the right side to see the different rows. Now it's important to note that you need to, you need to run your agent at least twice to see items that have been changed, unchanged, or removed, not just added. Um, the second thing that you, you have to have in order to see data compared and store item history is setting your unique fields. So a unique field allows you to mark certain fields as unique with the purpose of eliminating duplicates. The fields you want to set as unique should be considered anchor fields, meaning that if they change, they are marked as added. So let's take a look at the fields and how to do that. So if I go up to my data drop-down box here at the left, and I select it and I go and select fields, I will see all the fields for this particular agent. You'll notice here that I have two fields that are company name and symbol are marked as my unique fields. I know this because of this key symbol here, this key icon. Um, and I know that the company name is unique because it's an anchor field, meaning that if it changed, I want it, to, it would be a new company. So all these other fields are just regular fields that I want to know that are affected by prices. So if they do change, I want to see them as changed. Now to set a unique field, all you need to do is select the box next to the field and say set unique fields. It's important to note that if I were to set this field as unique, it would remove these other two unique fields and then set just this field as unique. So and it's also important to note, too, that by changing your unique fields, you no longer delete your data. This is an awesome feature, once again, with the store item history that came out in August. So you can, in case you mess up on your unique fields or you want to see different changes, you do have the ability to change your unique fields without losing data history. Okay, so once I have my unique field set, I can then go to my data and I'm ready to see what <clears throat> what is my data compared? So I'm going to go up to the fields drop down box here and then select the data. So once again, just for a quick review, the two requirements is you need to have store item history checked and unique fields set. Once you have this and you've run the agent at least twice, you're able to see what items have been added, changed, unchanged, or removed. 
So in this particular example of the stock prices, I see a bunch of items have been changed here on the left and a couple have been unchanged. So we're going to take a look at what the, uh, the compared data looks like. So to enable the compared data, or what we like to call uh, the change markup, you can now see there's a drop-down box at the changed icon. I can now select it and say show change markup. Once I do this, Mozinda will process the data and will show me, I'm going to check the box, there we go, will show me the changed data and what's been changed in each field. So let's take a look at some of these. So if I select this first one here, I look at it, I see that what was previously there from the previous run was a 0, 4 with a slash through. What was changed or recently added to this particular field was the green, highlighted green, 1, 2, underlined. I can also view this by uh, hovering over this field or this cell and selecting the changed icon that appears here. Once I do this, this box will appear. And you'll see that it will tell me there's only been one of one changes. So uh, 7.04 changed from 2 7.12. The first information here tells me how many characters were present in the previous run. So we know that there were, there were four characters present in the previous run, 7.04. The, the information on the, on the right here tells me how many characters were present after, from the most recent completed run. So what did it change to? So and it cha and so there were four characters that it, that are present from the most recent completed run. Finally, the center box here tells me the difference between the character count. So were there any additional characters added or taken away? So we'll look at an example where there are there is a difference between the two so you can see that. So let's go ahead and select done here and let's look for my example. So the Brainy Braun Inc. company here under the volume is going to have a difference in character count. You can see here that there were nine characters present in the previous run and now there are only seven characters left which gave us a, a difference in character count of negative two. Pretty self-explanatory. Um, finally, uh, if I select uh, a change that has multiple changes to it, I can view the changes up at the top here by simply selecting the arrow and it will just highlight the changes you, so you can view them. All right, so let's move into how to export this data and view the data once you've exported it. Now, you can export the data the same as before. So I'm going to go up to the, my double gear icon here at the left and select it, and then select the Export option under the Data tab. You will notice that there is a new, the Include Change Markup box already checked. I can uncheck it or check it if I want the change markup to be included in my file. Notice the file formats have not changed and are the same. So I'm going to download it as a CSV file with my change markup. Okay, so this will download. Okay, so once I'm here, I'm going to open up. So I will open this up in Excel. You have many different options to open this up in, but for this example, I will use uh, Microsoft Excel. Okay, so I'm just opening it up here. I'm going to move it over. Okay. so. Now it's important to note the reason why I'm not selecting open from the CSV file is because the file is going to look different. All right, let's go back to Excel. Here we go. Okay. So what I need to do is I need to import my data into Excel through UTF-8 compatibility. So let's do that right now. So I'm going to select the data tab in Excel. And then I'm going to go to from text or CSV. And select that. Now once it's here, I will go to my downloads. And select import. So once I'm here, you'll notice the file origin says Western Europe. And it will depend 
Uh, this can be different depending on the region. That's why we need to change this to UTF-8 compatibility. So let's go ahead and do that right now. So I'm going to select this drop-down box. I'm going to find, there it is right there, Unicode UTF-8. So we're going to select this one. It's common delimiter based on, do we'll just say the entire data set. And then load. Give it a second to think. Okay. So you'll notice if you look at my data set, it looks, it looks a little confusing. You can see, okay, symbol, company, name are good. But now you see that in the last, we see all these changes here, these fields have, that have changes have all this markup in it. This is called HTML encoded. So what we need to do, so first off, to recognize this, to figure out what cells in your data have the markup, there is a key indicator. And for those of you who are uh, comfortable with coding and will be working with this uh, data set, you can identify those fields that have the change markup in them by the first two characters. So if we look here at the top, you will see that there is an equal, so an equal sign with a slash and then a colon. This will always be in cells that have change markup. So we know that in each of these cells here that have the equal sign with a slash or with a colon, that something has been changed. So what does that even mean? Um, so this means that there are, obviously there have been changes, but it tells us in particular what's been deleted or inserted in through tag elements, so HTML tag elements. You'll see here that the change has been made and it is represented between a span tag, two span tags, so an open and a closed span tag. You can also see, if I select another example, um, what's been deleted from the previous run, what's been inserted, and then what stayed the same, and then deleted and inserted again. So let's review this particular example. So from the previous run, the number 20 was deleted, and was the new number 19 was inserted. The period, or the dot, stayed the same. Then the three that was after it from the previous one was removed, and a nine was inserted, and then finally a five stayed the same. And so you can, so by looking at this, you know that the final number is 19.95. And you can use, and you can use that to code in how to, to make those appropriate changes. So, you can, you can target the two letters at the beginning of each cell with the HTML, HTML encoded to locate which cells have the changes. And finally, this data is HTML encoded to differentiate the data changed from the metadata. It's done through this way so you can tell what's been changed even if you've scraped HTML as well. So that just about wraps up the data compared and the exporting feature. Um, I'm going to turn the time over to Reggie. Awesome. Thanks, Kenneth. Uh, that was great. Um, like, like Kenneth mentioned, we love to hear your feedback. You know, we were able to come up with these new features from your guys' feedback. And so if you have feedback from us, for us, please feel free to send that to us. Um, email us, call support, however you'd like. Let's go ahead and answer a few questions here. Here's one to start out with, Kenneth, for you. Can, how can I see change markups from previous runs? Sure thing. So going back to the web console here, um, that's a great question. And I know a lot of you are, are going to want to be doing this because you can now see change markup for previous runs before this feature uh, came out. So if we go over to the data tab, and you can either do it in history or jobs. So I select the jobs. I can select the job the previous job and say view bookmark data or view the individual job data. So there is a difference between these two. Um, now I don't want to go into too much detail here, but what I want to do is view previous jobs to answer the question is to say view the job data. Okay? So all of these have been added in this current job, so there's no changes. But if I go back here and I select another job, so let's go to this job. I select this job. I can say view job data and it will show me the job history and the change markup for this particular job. And it even tells me the job ID right here. Awesome. Um, here is another question. How does copying the data affect storage? That's also a great question. So when you copy data in the same account, 
you're duplicating that data and the agent. So it will, that storage will count, uh, will, will double. Um, if you move the agent, however, it will remove that agent and its data from that one account, so remove that storage and move it to the other account. So it will not double if you're moving. Excellent. So here's a one question. Using this new feature, um, in your opinion, how could they use this to help grow their business with the uh, compare um, data? Absolutely, that's a great question. So I, um, in my years of support, uh, the common uh, one, a, a, lot of, a lot of people use in retail use this for pricing analysis. So like I stated at the beginning, um, you're able to see the difference. We knew that a row changed, so a field of a row of an eye, a particular item of product name or company name um, changed, but we don't know which field changed in that row. Now you have the ability to quickly identify which field changed. So if you're looking at pricing analysis, for example, um, you can immediately know which price has changed and by how much to, and that can definitely uh, impact your business. Awesome. Thanks, Kenneth. Well, it looks like that's all the time we have right now for questions, but if you have follow-up questions, please feel free to schedule a training with us, call support so we can help you out. Um, thanks again for joining us, and we'll look forward to seeing you on the next webinar.